We had a question on YouTube last week. Can I plot data for a baseline with data graph like XRD, XPF, or FTIR raw data? And that they could find this in origin, but they weren't able to find this in data graph. And the short answer is yes, you can do uh, an analysis where you have some signal and you need to plot a baseline and then subtract that from the data. So what I did to help illustrate how you do this in data graph is to actually come up with sort of a simple example where I created a simple data set where we have a couple of peaks and we have a drifting signal. And I'm going to show you how in data graph we can fit a baseline to this data. We can also subtract that baseline from the data. And then we can also plot the individual peaks. Now this last functionality is in the beta version, which is what I'm going to use for this demonstration, but everything else is uh, in the current release version of data graph. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and show you some basic data that I created for this. And let me go ahead and just share my entire screen. Here it is. What do we have here? Well, I have uh, two different signal data sets that I created. This is one, again, very basic one. And I have a second one that I'm also going to show you how to do this with once I run through the first example. So with this first one, this is in a CSV file, I can very quickly uh, Let's see, right click on this and open it up. Here I have my data graph set to the default program to open up CSV files. So actually that just, I double clicked on it and it opened it up in data graph. So when I do that, it imports the data. So here I have my X and my signal and let's go ahead and just do a simple plot of this data. And you can see that this is the example that I just showed you that we're going to work through. So first of all, how do I create the baseline? Well, the, the first step to this is a fitting step. I'll go ahead and make another graph and go ahead and I can select my data again. And we're going to use this fit command, which has a shortcut in the toolbar. Uh, with my data selected, I can click the fit command. By default, it's going to do a linear fit. Now, since I also want to be able to see my data while I do this, I can go ahead and I'll just add points here so you can see my individual points. Let's just make these solid and a little bit smaller. And, uh, and so the fit type that we're going to use for this, I'm going to use a polynomial fit. And Datagraph has the ability to do high order polynomial fits um, and if I just do the default here, you can see the order of the polynomial is shown uh, right here on the fit command. But when we do this, what do we really want to fit? We're not fitting this region where the peaks are. We want to fit the baseline here, and we want to fit the baseline here on this side as well. To do that, I can go into my fit command and there is an option here for a fit range, but I'm not actually going to use that. I'm actually going to use the mask for this. Um, and the reason is that I want to own, I want to actually exclude the region where the peaks are and, and use the sides to fit my signal. So to do this, if I use as mask and I'm going to be masking on the X values, there is an option for lies inside, but there's also an option for lies outside. And that's what I think is really useful for this example. And I can say I want it to lie outside, or I only want to fit the data where it lies outside the region of three to seven, for example. And to make this a little clearer, let's change my point color to something, oops, a little bit lighter. And we'll go ahead and make our line a little bit fatter. Now, actually, this looks pretty good in and of itself, but you also have the ability to assess the fit um, using the residuals option down here. Well, maybe not an option, but it's a viewer of the residuals. To do this, I think first I'll go ahead and swap my view so that you can see this, close the data, and expand this out. So now you can see everything that's within my fit command 
And this is just a really handy way to assess the goodness of the fit. And you can see how on the left, eh, maybe not so good. On the right hand side, it looks uh, looks really good. So what am I looking at here? Well, uh, I'm looking at the residuals themselves and I want to see that the points are just evenly scattered around the baseline where this red line here is representing the baseline. Um, you also want to see this histogram on the right hand side looking relatively uniform or even like a normal distribution. Um, so anyway, so one thing that I can do to, to illustrate this a little bit more, if you're using the polynomial fit, you can change very easily the order of the polynomial. So I can make it, a, if I make it first order, then it's just linear. And you can certainly see here now the residuals show you that this is not as good a fit. Certainly can also look at the, um, the errors here and the R square value to confirm that. But as I increase the order of my polynomial, then I get a really good fit of the entire baseline here. And I'm pretty satisfied with that, uh, with this as my fit of my baseline. The next thing that I want to do now that I've fitted that is I want to subtract the baseline from my signal data. And I'm going to do that by using a plot action column. Let's actually just swap my view back again and I can go ahead and bring out my um, data panel here. So to add the plot action column, you're going to go under the other drop-down menu. That's over where we add columns into our user interface. And again, we use the plot action. Go ahead and select that. And the action that we're going to use instead of integrate is called subtract. So select that. And now what you see are, well, a couple of things. First, we have to sub subtract the X and the Y or select the X and the Y. I can use the drop down menus, but I can also, um, just like I can do this in other places, I can just drag and drop to populate that. And now I need to select the function that I am subtracting, which is the one that I fitted over here. Again, I could use the menu and go through and select, but I, personally find it very easy to just click and drag and drop. So I'm clicking right here on the icon and then that allows me to drag and drop that entry. So now I have the um, signal and maybe I'll just actually call the first one signal plus some drift and the subtracted column here is now going to be my signal without the drift. I'll go ahead and add a new graph and just go ahead and we'll plot these. There it is. That looks pretty good, right? Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to show you, or I'm, go I'm going to show you how to uh, select individual peaks or how to have it fit individual peaks. Again, this is in the beta version, but it's, uh, I think, a very cool functionality. And we're really looking for people actually to test this out uh, and help us to improve the functionality. I'll show you, again, how does it work for this relatively um, simple example with this data. So I'm going to select my data. Again, I'll do a fit. But this time, I'm going to be selecting a peaks option. Again, you will not see this if you're in the release version right now. Uh, this is it's something that's in our beta. So I select the peaks and uh, and let's go ahead and like I did before, I want to show some points. I can drag this command here, but now instead of being the signal plus the drift, I want just the signal. And uh, you'll notice on this, when you have the peaks option, that you can say how many peaks you're looking for, uh, and we just have to change that to two. And now this is clearly doing a really nice job of fitting this particular data set. And if I want to look at the individual peaks, I can extract that back as a column into my data. So I can extract uh, peak one, Again, I'm clicking the gear menu, extract as column, peak two. 
Now I have these in my data table. I typically like to, you know, often put things in different groups. So I might have this in a, um, another group. And then I can plot these. So in fact, if I select my X column and each one of these peak columns, if I now click the plot command once and twice, it does a plot of each one. And I would probably go ahead and change the color for these. And maybe we'll go ahead and make these nice and thick so you can see um, what I, how they fit. Okay, so this I think looks pretty good and uh, it is not too hard, but again, this is kind of a manufactured set of data that I created um, with this you know, particular example in mind. So what I wanna do is just show you what if I wanna bring in a different set of data and try this, which is gonna require some, uh, some modification of this file. So I'm going to do this by just selecting my two columns. I'll say data, import file, I have this other CSV file that with my columns selected, it has the same format and it's just going to immediately overwrite all my data. And notice how this is a pipeline here that I've created between the raw data, the baseline, the um, plotting of the baseline, uh, subtracting and my finding of the peaks. Now, um, this one doesn't look as good because I now have a different set of data where there's more separation between these two peaks. So if you go to my fit here, I originally set this mask so it uses the X value when it lies outside three and seven. But in this case, you see how this peak, well, it's, it, it, it's containing part of seven. And again, if I look at my residuals, um, you know, you, you can see it here a little bit. It's actually maybe easier seeing it, uh, just the fact that you're also, you have this baseline here that you're not uh, pinning that value like you would, would necessarily want to. So you have two options. You could uh, certainly change your polynomial, but if I make my polynomial too high, I can get, um, you know, strange oscillations. And I just, you know, I'm not quite getting a baseline I like with this lies outside of range. So I can, well, first of all, I could increase the range to only include this part of the data where it's eight or above. But I also might want to include some additional data because right here, this is also part of my baseline. And this is why using the mask is a really convenient way to do this because I can add another criteria to my mask to use this data as well. And uh, you can use a command drag to copy that population of what column I'm using to mask on. Um, but here I want to have uh, the first, I'll leave the same if it lies outside of three to eight, but I want it to include if it lies inside this uh, region in here. Well, that's a little more than I want, but uh, I would be, well, actually I can zoom in on it, make it a little easier to see. Uh, so what is this? This is maybe 4.6 to 4.9. So I can just type that in and let me now zoom this back out again. But the trick here is to change how this logic is set up because right now it's saying it has to be an and outside of three and eight and inside of this, that doesn't really make sense. So change this to an or, and now it is fitting the data the way that we want. And if you look at the residuals now, you can see how this inner uh, region is also included. And again, I might want to increase my, um, or change my polynomial line there. That looks pretty good to me. This is a, a sixth order polynomial. Um, maybe I could exclude this area. It really doesn't make a big difference for the fitting. But if I look again now at my data with the baseline subtracted, this looks pretty good to me. And the peak fitting also um, looks pretty good. So I brought in the new data and all I had to change 
was the mask I'm using to help me determine which data I'm uh, <laughs> considering my baseline, where you know where I want to include that. Now, just a, one comment because I know I've I've seen this in other programs where you can you know click along a region to determine where you want the baseline, and uh, and we don't have that in Data Graph. But to be honest, I I I really like this kind of an approach more because it is, uh, in my mind, it's a much more reproducible approach. We're not um, randomly, you know, well, not, maybe not completely randomly, but if you're clicking on the data to determine where you want the baseline, uh, you may click in a certain place. And then if someone comes behind you, they may click in a very different place. Now, of course, here it is a bit of a judgment call as to what region you're going to use for the baseline but that's certainly something that you can uh, document as well as the order of the polynomial. And you don't necessarily have to use a polynomial. You, If a linear fit would be appropriate, you could use that or any of these other types of fits as well. And uh, so with that, I hope that this was helpful. Again, I really appreciate the, uh, the question on our YouTube channel. And anything else that you would like any help with, please uh, definitely let us know.